the Academy revealed Will Smith's fate for his infamous Oscars incident two weeks ago. He is banned from attending Academy events or programs for 10 years. In a statement, Will Smith responded saying, I accept and respect the Academy's decision. And here to shed light on the ban and what factors may have gone into this decision is Rachel Fazay, managing partner of Zweibach, Fazay and Coleman. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You previously worked with the Academy at the Oscars. Um, what do you think? What's your take on the ban? Ten years. Appropriate? I think it's appropriate. It's a bit harsher than I thought it would be. I thought it might be five years. But I think they had a very long meeting at the Board of Governors to discuss this. And my guess is they were deciding between a permanent ban and one to five years. And they wanted to give him a chance to redeem himself after 10 years, but wanted to make sure they sent the message that this kind of behavior was completely inappropriate and would meet a consequence. So, Rachel, for people out there that are watching that may not have been following this so closely, kind of go through what the decision entailed, because he can't go to the Oscars, but he can still get nominated, right? Correct. So, Will Smith gave up his membership to the Academy, which would have been a very big consequence that could have happened, which would have been expulsion or suspension. But by him giving up his membership, he gave up his voting rights. So that's one of the big things you get by being a member of the Academy, is you get to vote for the awards. So once he had given that up, things changed for the Academy, and they could really only implement a few consequences. And re really what they could only implement, I think, fairly at this point, without trying to kill his career or be a bigger impediment than they thought they wanted to be, was to say, okay, you've given up your voting rights, so we can't take that away, but we can take away your right to be here and your right to present, but we will leave you with the possibility of receiving an Oscar and any movie you're in receiving an Oscar, and we will leave you with the Oscar that you just earned. So we're not taking away your Oscars, but we're taking away your right to attend the event. Right. And, you know, Rachel, there's been a lot of backlash on the Academy for not doing more during the broadcast. The Academy admitted that itself. Um, Chris Rock, you know, uh, refused to press charges. Um, what would have been the appropriate action, legal and otherwise, in the moment by the Academy? I think they had a lot of big decisions to make right at that moment, and maybe they were all just a little stunned by what had happened. That he committed a crime on stage. A lot of people would argue that he should have been removed immediately at that point. I think a lot of a huddle must have happened and a lot of discussion relating to what to do must have been going on at that moment, but things were moving probably too fast to make the exact decision to just have him ejected, which might have even caused a little more commotion than had already been caused. So there is a strong argument he should have been removed for committing a crime, but I think what they chose to do is just deal with it in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. And then what about, you know, Chris Rock? I mean, what's the statute there? Could he still press charges? Yes, he could still press charges. Uh, the city attorney could press charges without Chris Rock being a part of it, but I think they have no intention of doing so, and it looks like Chris Rock does not intend to do so. Right, and, and his career seems to be soaring despite it. You know, his, uh, his uh, performances are sold out and receiving standing ovations mm -hmm. into the 15 minutes, we're told. Yeah. Anyways, Rachel, thank you so much for your expertise this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel.